Chuck E. Cheese was known for their animatronic band. Other than Disney World, this was the best place to go to see animatronics. So when you have something popular, you're going to get other places that try to copy that success by doing their own version of it. And that's how we got so many different Chuck E. Cheese ripoffs over the years. They would just use the Chuck E. Cheese animatronics and reskin them to look different. But most of the time, they looked pretty bad. Like, what is this? But there is one place that has animatronics that were originally from Chuck E. Cheese and actually look good. That place would be Gillian's Wonderland Pier in Ocean City, New Jersey. These animatronics were first built for Chuck E. Cheese back in the early 80s. These animatronics were part of the balcony stage where only the top half of the animatronic would be seen. And just by knowing that, you can see the animatronics move in very similar ways. But at some point, the animatronics were moved to Gillian's Wonderland Pier and no one is quite sure how exactly Exactly they got here. Some people believe that they're from another place called Zach Periwinkles that also had retrofitted Chuck E. Cheese animatronics. That basically means they reskinned them to look different. And if you look at photos of the animatronics this place had, they almost look the same. But no matter where they came from, the animatronics were installed here at Gillian's in the late 90s and have been here ever since. So in this video, I'm going to go to Ocean City and check out what was once Chuck E. Cheese animatronics that have now been rethemed into to the man and dog show. So these are the animatronics right here. It's called the Man and Dog Show. I'm not sure why they called it that, but that's what it is. The only indication of the name is on this crate right here. It says it, but it's like behind that bush. But before I get into anything else, we gotta see them perform. And the only way to do that is by putting money in. It's not like Chuck E. Cheese where they just play for free. You gotta put in a dollar. So you see the sign right there? You just put the dollar in and they should go. <laughs> it should go this time. And there they go. Now, I would play more of the performance, but I don't want to get copyrighted. So to make them play, like I said, you have to insert a dollar for every song. But they do play seven different songs, so if you put in seven dollars, you'll get every performance. The only songs they sing are different country songs, like Cotton Eye Joe, Rocky Top, and all that great stuff. But not only do you get the song, you also get them interacting with each other, just like the Chuck E. Cheese animatronics. They mostly just say random stuff about the park. Howdy, folks. Y'all having a good time? But it's just interesting to see stuff like that, especially with Chuck E. Cheese getting rid of their animatronics. You don't see a lot of that anymore where they interact with each other on the stage. It almost makes them feel more real than if they were just up there moving their head back and forth and that's it. By them talking, it just makes it a better experience to watch, especially for younger kids. I mean, I guess not me because I hated them, but other kids maybe. I have to say the look of it is really good. Just the theming of it really fits with everything else around it. It's right next to this Thomas the Train ride and the ride goes all the way around the park and back around there. The only reason I'm mentioning the ride is because I remember as a kid, we would always want to go on the Thomas the Train ride that went around the park and everything. But to get on the ride, you would have to go up this railing and walk past these animatronics. And for some reason, I was so scared of them. And it wasn't like I was scared of a lot of stuff, but these things just freaked me out so bad that I didn't go on the ride for so many years. And also, it wasn't like I was scared of Chuck E. Cheese animatronics or anything. It was just these things for some reason. It's interesting to look at these animatronics because if you know Chuck E. Cheese, you'll right away recognize these. Some of the characters almost look identical to what they once were. But the five characters in this show are Rocky the Panda, Bubba the Mountain Lion, Henrietta the Chicken, Hank the Dalmatian, and this guy named Antonio. But with all that, now I'm gonna go through each individual character and talk about who they used to be in Chuck E. Cheese and stuff like that. So first I'll start with Rocky the Panda. And you can see all their names with the sign right here. Below the one dollar, it tells you each one of their names. So Rocky was originally Chuck E. Cheese himself. If you look at old footage from the Pizza Time Theater animatronics, you can see a resemblance. Back then, the animatronics were only from the waist up. So when they put the animatronics here, they added legs on them. And honestly, I gotta say, they are pretty good reskins. Like, if you didn't know Chuck E. Cheese, you wouldn't even guess they were from there. They did a pretty good job making them look like different characters. But obviously, if you know the animatronics, you can see what they once were. And if you're wondering who did the redesigns for these animatronics, they were done by a company called Sally Corporation. They mostly do theming for dark rides, which I actually went on once you can check out that video but they also build animatronics and have even talked about building a five nights at freddy's ride so it makes sense why these animatronics look as good as they do this company has built a lot of animatronics over the years i mean technically they didn't build these they just reskin them but they still look good and if you're curious why companies will reach out to ask to change the look of the characters is because of copyright issues you can't just take the animatronics and keep them the same because then chuck e cheese could sue that company but the animatronics themselves can be kept as long as you change 
change the look. At least that's what Chuck E. Cheese did back then. They would actually give restaurants the animatronics for them to use, but nowadays they ask the employees to just destroy them. So any animatronics that are around today have been completely destroyed and thrown away. Right next to Rocky, we have Helen, otherwise known as Henrietta. I think it's pretty obvious to see that it was once Helen. I mean, just take one look at old photos and you can point out the similarities pretty quickly. But she is pretty unique in this setting because she's the only one that's standing. All the other ones are sitting. So right next to her is Hank or from Chuck E. Cheese, it would be Jasper. I personally think this is the most obvious one to tell. Not to say they did a bad job though, because he does look different enough. And then right next to him, you have what was once Pasquale, but then rethemed into Antonio. Also, what's pretty interesting is that back then he used to play like an instrument and you can kind of see where he did. His hands are in the same motion of that. And he has the mustache and all. Like I said about pretty much all of them, they look similar, but not exactly the same. But the most interesting of them all is this one at the end. People are pretty split on which one this used to be. But from what the majority thinks is the body used to be Mr. Munch, but the head is from an animatronic called The King. Basically, back in the day, Chuck E. Cheese tried out different animatronics, and one of them was The King, where it was basically a lion that looked like Elvis. And I'm pretty sure that's where the head came from. So this one's definitely the most unique in that regard. I also want to throw in a shout out to the YouTube channel, Actors317, because the people that run that channel actually work at Gillian's Wonderland, the place I'm at now, and document them taking care of and repairing these animatronics. That's where I got a lot of my information for this video. And if it wasn't for them, these things probably would have been gone long ago. It would have just been workers that really didn't care about them. But because they do, they've been here for a lot longer and look great. They've lasted way longer than most animatronics do. So I just want to give a shout out to that channel. He actually made a pretty good video on the whole history of these things. It's like a whole documentary of the time they were put into recent. So that's how you know they really do care about these, which is great to see. You don't really see a lot of animatronic stuff anymore. So I hope these are here for a while. So that was the man and dog show. I've seen these animatronics for a long time, but never knew the history of it. But doing research for this video, I found it very interesting. And I'm just glad to see them still there after all these years. Animatronics have been going away over time. Not many places have them anymore. But at Gillian's Wonderland Pier in Ocean City, you can still see these guys. Hopefully they're around for a lot longer, but who knows? So I recommend that you visit this place before they're gone, if they do get rid of them. I just sadly have a feeling that one day I'm going to go up that ramp and see that the animatronics are gone. It wouldn't be surprising, but it would definitely be upsetting, especially since I remember them from my childhood. That's it. Make sure to subscribe. I have a bunch of other Chuck E. Cheese videos, so if you want to check those out, you can. I go into the history of the stages, and I have one last thing to say. I am now selling merch. Click the link in the description to get yours today. <laughs>